I thought it was one of Tinker Tom's aliens. Aliens are real! Enough! The blimp is called the Pridwin, and it's operated by the Brotherhood of Steel. The Brotherhood of Steel are a formidable, highly advanced order. And they've come here to destroy since. Shit! Spread the word. The Brotherhood are our enemies. There's no possibility of peace. Tinker Tom will be spearheading a fail-safe plan to deal with this Brotherhood. Codename Red Glare. But for now, we monitor them and keep them clear of our operations. The focus remains on the Institute. You've all got jobs to do. Do them. I'm very busy. Unless you need my medical ex- Desdemona. I have a report here. It reads more like a comic book. Apparently, one hell of a fight took place at Green Tech Genetics. Yeah, that was me. I took down a courser. That's what the report says. Hard to believe. I'm all for one less courser in the world, but the conventional wisdom is that you run from them rather than engage them. So why did you kill him? I needed a courser chip. I need the code on it. You have one of their chips intact? Follow me now. Decoding a courser chip is a very delicate operation. A million Pam things can wants go to talk on. with you. The She's least in of back. which is losing the data. Fortunately, we have the right man. Hey, dude. You need something? Tom, we got a courser chip. Whoa! For real? Oh, man, it's been ages. I was power napping and whammo, it hit me. Got some ideas on how to kid out deliverer. Make your super badass gun even more. Well, more. So check out my stock. Not now. Well, if you do need something later, don't be a stranger. You've hit the jackpot with this. Hand over the chip. Let's see what's on it. Here you go. All right, Tom, make it happen. All right, little course of chip. Let's have the circuit analyzer take a crack at you. We're in. Chip accessed. Just poke the analog connectors a little. What? Oh man, don't, don't, don't crash. Hold it together. Memory hiccup. Here it comes. Encryption algorithms. All right. All right, we're still running. Oh man. They've added more decimals to the last cipher. This is gonna be... Come on, baby. Show me that pattern. Where is it? Wait. They're using the same logarithmic function as the key generator. Oh man, we got lucky. Sometimes got you, you the direct approach the I got you. isn't the best to take. Right, software in. Come on. Show me that sweet bass number. Come on, baby. Then we got it. We got the code. <laughs> Let me load that onto the hollow tape for ya. Good work, Tom. Hey, yeah, but I'm not sure our luck will hold up next time, Des. And agent, I hope that helps you as much as you've helped us. Good work. Everyone's all, you've been hitting the cams way too hard. But I got my eyes. Oh, I see. We need to get out of this radiation. Sure, I'd see you again. You managed to get what you need. I have the code. Suppose I shouldn't be surprised. You did get rid of Kellogg after all. Not too much of a leap to take down a courser. How'd you manage to get it decoded? The railroad helped me. Oh, God, those kooks. 
I would have expected they'd be too busy trying to liberate vending machines or setting computer terminals free or... Sorry, they just have something of a reputation. You're not the only one who's been busy. I did the best I could. From memory and things I've overheard through the years. Came up with some schematics for you. Wasn't easy. These hands are ridiculous. Fine motor skills have gone to shit. Here's the simple explanation. You need to build a device that will hijack the signal the Institute uses to teleport coursers and send you instead. You know the craziest part of the design? That classical music station, that's the carrier signal for the relay. All the data's on harmonic frequencies. You've been hearing it all along. I want to be clear that this isn't my area of expertise. I was bioscience, not engineering or advanced systems or anything. I'm looking for results, not excuses. Yeah, yeah. I told you. I did the best I could. But if you can build this device and make use of that code, you should be able to override the signal from the Institute's relay. Can you? I mean, can you build it? You have people that can help. This is a lot for one person, even you. I got it covered. Good. Good. Because you've got to make it in there. For both our sakes. And don't you forget our agreement. I've helped you as best I can. If you make it in there, you find that serum. It's my only hope for ever being... normal. So you find it. Now go on. Take these and get to work. You do whatever it takes. Call on whoever you know to help you. for a way into the Institute. You should talk to Proctor Ingram. You're an inspiration to us all, Knight. By now, I'm sure you've deduced that our arrival in the Commonwealth wasn't coincidental. We're here because of a unique energy reading recorded by... Mm. According to the sure. moment this... The, to, the only logical... Mm -hmm. That's where we need... Well, guess what? This is your lucky day. I have a way inside. The method is useless without the means to make it work. Perhaps we should pool our resources to achieve our common goal. Now, indulge me for a moment by satisfying my curiosity. Tell me why you're so eager to get into the Institute. I think they're the ones who kidnapped my son. The Institute preys on the weak to further their own ends. Together, we'll make them pay for their crimes. I'll call ahead and brief Proctor Ingram. Report to the airport, and get to work on your project right away.
This frame is driving me crazy. I've got like three itches I can't even scratch. Elder Maxon said you'd help me build the signal interceptor. So, looks like you're calling the shots around here now, huh? All right, I'll bite. What does your new miracle device do? The Institute uses teleportation to get in and out. This machine can hijack their signal and send me instead. Teleportation? Molecular transmission via encrypted RF waves? Okay, even I have to admit, that's genius. This explains why we've been picking up anomalous energy readings all across the Commonwealth. Not to mention how they get their tin soldiers to come out of the damn walls. And this little beauty allows you to literally hijack a return signal. Instead of grabbing the intended target, it grabs you instead. Impressive. Well, you definitely know your stuff. Damn right I do. It's difficult to make out all the details here, but I'm thinking you can get started by building a stabilized reflector platform. It's gonna take a cargo hold full of high-grade metal, but I'm sure that we have plenty of it right here at the airport. I'm glad you can make sense of those plans. I haven't made sense of all of it yet, but I will by the time you get the first part built. Here's a list of everything you need to find. You're also going to need a massive power source to get the signal interceptor running. Look at a machine. Any luck building the platform yet? Yes. I'm ready to build the rest of it. Good. Let's move on then. Here's a list of everything we'll need. Now I know some of that might as well be in Greek, so I'll be around if you have any questions. Looks good, Ingram. I'll get to work right away. <laughs> I wish I had your confidence. Oh, one last thing before I forget. It's important that all the components are wired together so all the pieces are on a single grid. Otherwise, this isn't going to work. If you need any help, I'll be over at the build site making some adjustments and calculations. I'd wish you good luck, Knight, but I think we're both going to need it. Night. <laughs> Do you need any help with the signal interceptor? Thank you. 
I'm too busy to speak right now. We're close. All we need is enough power to fire up the signal interceptor. Proctor. Better check all your connections and make sure all the components are wired together on a single grid. Excuse me, Proctor Ingram. We're close. All we need is enough power to fire up the signal. This isn't going to do anything without power. Better check all your connections and make sure all the components are wired together on a single grid. Proctor Ingram? We're close. All we need is enough power to fire up the signal.
I'll send for you if I need. If it was up to me, I'd take every feral mutie and synth and shoot them in the base. If you keep hoarding that garbage, you're going to slow us down. Oh god, mold rap. The stick was a really bad idea. Excuse me! Have you ever fired a minigun? Choose through ferals like paper. Attention. Delta Team Lead, report to the bridge. Delta Team Lead to the bridge. Hesitating to pull the trigger on any of the Commonwealth scum can be fatal. Damn ferals. Radiation has a twisted sense of humor. If you're looking for ammunition and weapon mods, Proctor Teagan might have what you need. Our vertebrates should give us the air superiority we need to win this war. Can I help you with anything? I'm looking for some firepower. All of my weapons are mission ready.
Seems to be working. Remarkable work, Knight. The signal interceptor appears to be complete. Are you ready to put it to the test? Thanks to me, yes. You mean thanks to you and Proctor Ingram. You may have done the field work, but it was her know-how that enabled us to decipher Dr. Virgil's schematics. That being said, this is the first time we've attempted to directly adapt Institute technology. When we throw that switch, we don't know exactly what's gonna happen. God willing, you'll end up inside the Institute, and the mission can continue. I knew this was a suicide mission. Be proud. Your bravery in the face of the unknown exemplifies what it means to be part of the Brotherhood. Now, I want you to listen very carefully. Once you've entered the Institute, we expect to lose contact. So it's imperative you remember everything I'm about to tell you. About ten years ago, the Brotherhood began recruiting civilian scientists from the Capital Wasteland to assist with various projects. During this process, we were able to obtain the services of Dr. Madison Lee, a noted mind in the field of nuclear engineering. That's fortunate. Yes, it was. Securing useful resources during wartime is critical. That said, Dr. Lee's contributions to our cause were instrumental in maintaining order in the Capital Wasteland. After some time, she developed differences with the Brotherhood and exiled herself to the Commonwealth. We're fairly certain that her intent was to make contact with the Institute. What sort of differences? Although she was working with the Brotherhood of Steel, she never formally joined as a scribe. After the Capital Wasteland was secured, she objected to the Brotherhood's continued military presence there. I think she assumed we would just walk away from it all. She was wrong. Your mission is simple. Once you're inside the Institute, we want you to track down Dr. Lee's whereabouts. If you find out that she's still alive, make contact with her and convince her to return to the Brotherhood of Steel. There's a special project we're working on, and it needs her attention. What's this project that needs her attention? Dr. Lee previously worked on a potent weapon for the Brotherhood of Steel. We'd like her to continue where she left off. That's all I can tell you. Listen to me, Knight. I'm well aware that you're risking your life going into the Institute blind. Just keep your mind on the mission, and don't let anything they say sway you from your duty. Good luck. Checked and rechecked everything. I think the signal interceptor is ready to go. Are you? Shouldn't we test it first? Not with a single frequency code. The second you arrive and the Institute figures out which signal we hijacked, they'll change the code and we're locked out. This is a one shot deal. So what do you say? You ready to give it a try? Let's do this. All right. Head up onto the platform, and we'll see if I can find a signal to lock onto. The device doesn't work from over there. You have to be on the platform. Let's see. Relays dialed in. Beam emitters warmed up. Everything looks green. Let me start scanning for the signal. Cross your fingers. I'm inputting the code now. Wow, there's a heck of a lot of interference and ghosting. It's gonna take a minute or two to lock in. By the way, this little trip you're taking is a heck of an opportunity to find out as much as we can about the Institute and what they're up to. I put a clever little program on this holotape that'll scan their network and download anything it finds. If you place it in any terminal down there, it'll do the rest. Bring it back to me and I'll see if I can make sense of whatever it found. Well, well. Looks like we have a winner. RF wave capture complete. Ramping the emitter. 60%. 80%. 
Emitter's spiking, but steady. All that's left is to throw the transmit switch. Transmitting in three, two, one. Stay safe, soldier. I wondered if you might make it here. You're quite resourceful. I am known as Father. The Institute is under my guidance. I know why you're here. I'd like to discuss things with you face to face. Please, step into the elevator. I can only imagine what you've heard, what you think of us. I'd like to show you that you may have the wrong impression. Welcome to the Institute. This is the reality of the Institute. This place, these people, the work we do. For over a hundred years, we've dedicated to humanity. Decades of research, countless experiments and trials, a shared vision of how science can help shape the future. It has never been easy. And our actions are often misinterpreted by those above ground. Someday, perhaps, we can show them what we've accomplished. But for now, we must remain underground. There's too much at stake here to risk it all. As you've seen, things above are... unstable. I'd like to talk to you about what we can do for everyone. But that can wait. You are here for a specific very personal reason. You are here for your son. Sean? Huh? Yes, I'm Sean. Sean? Is that really you? Who are you? Sean. It's me. I'm... I'm your dad. Father, what's going on? What's happening? Sean, are you okay? You're not hurt, are you? What's going on? Father? Father! I'll kill them for this. All of them. I don't know you. Go away. Father! Father, help me! There's someone here! Help me! Please, Sean. I'm your father. Talk to me. Just open the door. Father? Father, help me. He's trying to take me. Father? Father, help me. Sean. S923, recall code Cirrus. Fascinating, but disappointing. The child's responses were not at all what I anticipated. He's a prototype, you understand. We're only just now beginning to explore the effects of extreme emotional stimuli. Please try and keep an open mind. I recognize that you are emotional, and that your journey here has been fraught with challenges. Let's start anew. I am Father. Welcome to the Institute. I could kill you. Right here. Right. Now. Yes. Yes, you could. And I would be powerless to stop you. Just... 
Help me understand what's going on here. I promised answers. And answers you shall have. But I need you to realize that this... situation is far more complicated than you could have imagined. You have traveled very far, and suffered a great deal to find your son. Well, your tenacity and dedication have been rewarded. It's good to finally meet you. After all this time, it's me. I am Sean. I am... your son. How is that even possible? I know this is a lot to take in. In the vault, you had no concept of the passage of time. You were released from your pod and went searching for the son you'd lost. But then you learned that your son was no longer an infant, but a ten-year-old boy. You believed that ten years had passed. Is it really so hard to accept that it was not ten, but sixty years? That is the reality, and here I am. Raised by the Institute, and now its leader. Hell of a story, but I guess it does make sense. I'm glad you're willing to accept the truth. It's quite encouraging. At that time, the year 2227, the Institute had made great strides in synth production, but it was never enough. Scientific curiosity and the goal of perfection drove them ever onward. What they wanted was the perfect machine. So they followed the best example thus far. The human being. Walking, talking, fully articulate, capable of anything. Human synths? Really? Human-like synths. A great distinction. The Institute endeavored to create synthetic organics. The most logical starting point, of course, was human DNA. Plenty of that was available, of course. But it had all become corrupted. In this... wasteland, radiation affected everyone. Even in their attempts to shield themselves from the world above, members of the Institute had been exposed. Another source was necessary. But then the Institute found me, after discovering records from Vault 111. An infant, frozen in time, protected from the radiation-induced mutations that had crept into every other human cell in the Commonwealth. I was exactly what they needed. And so it was my DNA that became the basis of the synthetic organics used to create every human-like synth you see today. I am their father. Through science, we are family. The synths, me, and you. And you... you've been down here the whole time? I have. Yes. I know you must have questions. Please. Anything I can do to help you understand. Kellogg. He worked for you? Kellogg. He was an Institute asset long before I arrived here. It wasn't until I became director that I learned of all the things he'd done. What kind of man he was. You knew the man was a psychopath, but you used him anyway? <laughs> Would you have preferred that I turned him loose on the Commonwealth? At least keeping him on a short leash kept the collateral damage to a minimum. The Institute took advantage of Kellogg's vicious nature. I will freely admit that. Institute technology prolonged his life and his usefulness far beyond any normal human lifespan. He never failed the Institute, but his cruelty became more apparent with every completed objective. 
I won't lie. It's no coincidence your path crossed his. It seemed a fitting way to allow you... us... to have some amount of revenge. What else can I say? To ease your mind. Your mother... She never got to see you grow up? Yes. What happened to her was... I've gone over the records of the incident, of course. It seems her death was an unfortunate bit of collateral damage. Collateral damage? Is that all she was to you? I forget that it's been such a short time for you. I don't have any direct memories. And I've had my entire life to cope with a loss. Has it always been easy? Of course not. But I've done my best to move on and live my life. For many years, I never questioned who my parents were. I accepted my situation, and that was that. With old age comes regret, and asking what if more often. But what matters now is that you and I have a chance to begin again. What else can I say? to ease your mind. So you're in charge of the Institute? I am the acting director, yes. I spent decades working to reach this point. It's a responsibility I take very seriously. The Institute. It's important. It really is humanity's best hope for the future. No matter what those above ground might think of us. But, Director? Why you? I was the most qualified for the position. Obviously. I've lived my life within these walls. Dedicated to science like every other member of the Institute. My hard work has paid off. Ultimately, the Commonwealth has nothing to fear from us. Whatever you've seen or heard, I know I can convince you of that. Just give me time. I know there's more for us to discuss, but the Institute is on the verge of some important breakthroughs. Your presence would be appreciated as we approach them. I've been a part of something amazing here. I've helped to build a life for myself and the people of the Institute, and now, after all these years, you have an opportunity to help with that. Doesn't that intrigue you? Isn't that what you want? You want me to stay here? In the Institute? Yes. That is what I propose. Is it so hard to imagine? The Institute can provide a better life than anything above ground. You've been in the Commonwealth. You've seen what it's like. I assure you that you are better off with us. How can you say that? How can you be so dismissive of all those people? Everything they've done? Because it is the simple truth. And I believe you know it too. I simply ask that you give the Institute, me, a chance. A chance to show you what I've been telling you. We really do have humanity's best interest at heart. Will you take that chance? Are you sure you want this? Yes, I am. It would benefit us both to work together. All right. Thank you. The Institute is now your home as much as it is mine. Please take some time, get to know it. Meet the people you'll be working with. You'll want to introduce yourself to the division heads. Dr. Fillmore in facilities. Dr. Ao in SRB. Dr. Holdren in bioscience. And finally, Dr. Lee in advanced systems. They've all been notified of your arrival, of course. Meet them, and then we'll discuss what comes next. Sean. About this synth. You mean the child? It's a fascinating project, really. 
There are issues to be solved, of course, but... He's definitely impressive. Yes. It's pushed our technology to the limit. We've gained some valuable insights in terms of both hardware and software. I'll make sure it's brought back online in the near future. You'll have an opportunity to interact with him further. But... I'll admit I'm curious. As a parent looking for a child, looking for the younger version of me... What do you think? Do you think you could love him? Like you would a real boy? Seriously? You really believe a human could love a synth? That's a difficult question. I suppose it depends on how closely we've managed to mimic human behavior and emotions. Yours is a unique position. You may be the only one that's truly able to answer these questions right now. I wouldn't claim to know everything you're feeling, but... If in some small way the boy's presence can help, I hope you'll keep an open mind. Hold it right there. Is there a problem? Routine security check. See anything suspicious lately? Suspicious? What do you mean by suspicious? I mean, like dodging my questions. No, nothing to report, sir. If I see something, I'll be sure to come right to you. You do that. I'd hate to find your name on a repurposed list. 